I'm going to give you a complete breakdown, everything I can think of on how I've developed a very high percent win rate against the Samur boss fight. Huge thanks to Zero Master for laying this groundwork and Lightning Break for being a huge big brain behind a lot of this here. My name's Austin, let's dive right in. So before we even get to the fight, you need to know a few different things. You need to go in with 2 BFG from this map, fast travel back to get it if you need it. You need to be able to use Chrono Strike if you want to, it's such a good rune, we'll talk about that later, and be able to rune swap. Let's do this. Okay, like I said, it's going to be a pretty big breakdown. We'll look at the first phase and we'll talk about each as I go. Basically, PB Ballista is the king here. That's that's really all I'm going to be using for this first phase. When he shoots those purple balls like that, you can do a lock-on. You do not want to treat this like the con and do a lock-on pretty much at any other time. He's just going to run away. He'll summon these eyeballs when he gets about down to this point. There are two. They go down to PB Ballista, so just knock them out very quickly. That's it. You do not want to leave those up. They have very annoying damage there. It will hurt you. He comes back at about, I don't know, 10 second intervals or so. You at least want to get rid of one of them. Both preferable, but if you get rid of one, you do get some ammo back, which is nice. I don't think you get Ballista, though, which is interesting. So you want to have the zombies that you're, are there for your chainsaw, for your fall armor, anything that you can, just like I, I did right here. Okay, so we got to keep an eye on Samur. Chain Gun Shield is a true MVP here because it will protect you from all sides. And when you're coming out of a chainsaw, you can use it, hit your button, and hold down your mod key. You recharge it every three sec, uh, every four seconds. The chainsaw takes three seconds, so naturally, you get it pretty much every time you come out of a chainsaw. Okay, so phase one's down. It's it's pretty much straightforward. Uh, phase two is a little trickier. I actually, this is a good example. This is from my first Ultra Nightmare attempt, attempt one, and it's a good example because it's not a perfect run. I messed up a lot, so I'm able to teach you what not to do. First off, go for the Hell Knight. Lock on right away. Oh, there's a mistake right there. Let's rewind it. Watch. Here's what I did wrong. Here's here's what you need to watch for. Go for the Hell Knight straight away. He is way too mobile and he needs to go. When you go through the portal, don't do that. I put up my shield and tried to run away. If you go for the Mancubus first, that's not good because this guy's going to chase you around like crazy. And as if you've noticed, the Mancubus is not doing really anything to me and I'm just completely getting annihilated here. As soon as the enemy dies, go for the Spirit. You don't even, if you don't do the GK and you just kill the Knight, don't wait. As soon as the Knight is dead, go for the Spirit or any possessed enemy. He'll come back, you can do lock on, you can freeze him. And we got a raid here at this point. And you can do the lock on on him, you can do peekaboo shooting around the corner, your shield, just be careful if you do the shield, this mancubus, watch him just, well, I will say watch him rip through it, but he didn't. So do ice bomb, flame, SSG ballista combo to get rid of the knight, but he'll be back in just a second. The, ba the main advantage of having only the mancubus left is that he his mobility sucks. You can see how much I'm able to just hide from him, and if I do have to go down the alleyways, let's see, let me use grenades, I need to make this point real quick too. Grenades and blood punch on possessed enemies don't seem to have a m much of a bad effect. Possessed enemies don't have more health. They have resistances to weapons. It varies per enemy. It's usually what, like, I think 66% or something. It's it's bad. But grenades and blood punch seem to do well. So if you can do that, throw them off. That's great. Go for it. But the key here is just using all my tools I have and making sure that the Mancubus is the last one left because he will not follow me. If you do go across those little, between the two little platforms, use your shield or meat hook go quickly across because you do not want to get caught in the middle. Going across right there, in the middle here, with that Mancubus alive. Okay, so another quick point, whenever you're doing the microwave like that, I didn't need to do it here, I couldn't with my ice bomb. Freeze whatever is around you while you're doing, while you're getting rid of the spirit. You saw me go around like that. That was for a purpose. I was watching the arena and making sure nothing else was coming at me. Go for the ice bomb if you have to. We'll be sh I'll be showing you that a little bit later, what to do there. I'm letting my chainsaw recharge. One pip, get that. Don't worry about this. Just just recover. You can use get your health and armor back in this situation with the zombies while the other demons are alive. It's a little risky. I don't recommend doing it. I recommend doing this pretty sick strat on the next arena. Picked up from Zero Master. Okay, so this will be the third phase of Samur. Now this, people don't realize this. Let me show you. This is really cool. Bet you didn't know this. This whole entire phase is on a timer, a one minute timer. It does not matter what you do. It does not matter how many cacos you kill. It does not matter if you go for a, a walk in the park. It doesn't matter. It's one minute long for this phase. So what you want to do is maximize it. You're going to see here, I'm going to make some swishes. Check it out. Go to my runes, do savagery and dazed and confused. This is for a purpose. I know this room is on a timer. I do not want to I, I want to use the best things I can to my advantage, so watch this. We'll do the shotgun. This is a few layers of strategy. Look, the two center pieces, the highs, go red, and then the lows go red. So you're going to want to alternate between high and low. Use your shotgun to do the grenades in the mouth of the cacos. 
This is so you don't waste your ammo. You don't get it back at the end of this phase. You're not going to use your shotgun hardly at all in the next phase, so use it here. Notice I'm just letting him sit. I'm just letting him sit. I'm waiting the timer out. There's portals up at the top. You don't really need them. Don't worry about them. With your savagery on, you can do a meat hook to glory kill like that after he's staggered, and you will get 20 armor back. So you want to do this to set yourself up for the next phase. You want to go in <laughs> fully armored if you can, because it can go bad really fast. All right, so we're waiting it out. I'm kind of going for a little more armor. When these lasers come up, do what I'm kind of doing. Just kind of dance around them. Use your chain gun shield to defend. Chain gun shield is so good. You really got to use it. 360 degree protection, four second recharge. Coming out of a chainsaw, you basically always have it. So you can see here, I'm, I'm going to do a chain gun shield. Well, maybe not. Keeping them staggered. Okay. All right. This is, this is big right here. These last two phases give people a lot of trouble. So we're going to spend maybe, a, maybe an extra moment on them. I've been able to do this next phase without any damage, but that was in practice. Ultra nightmare. My nerves were at me. Uh, this actually next phase didn't go too great. So it's a good example to show you. Okay. So when we're loading into phase four, here's the thing. The where he is at right now, directly across from me, originally I thought was where he would end up on his platform. Always be watching where he will go. Keep a very close eye out. Watch. And for the runes, I'm going to Chrono Strike and Saving Throw. Chrono is so good. I, it is so good for this. Okay, so yeah, he was on that platform. You're going to want to do PB Ballista. Uh, I was talking to Drake. He's in the speedrun Discord. And the con has a weakness in her chest. Not a headshot, but a chest. We're thinking Samur does too, maybe. But the whole point is, PB Ballista is going to be your friend. Absolutely. When he does the purple energies, you can do lock on. You can get two, maybe three in, but I didn't do that. Stay up high. PB Ballista quick switch. Stay up high. Track Samur down. Just like, I guess like a hawk would be the phrase. Where he goes, you follow that little purple trail. You find him, you track him down just like I'm doing here. Look, watching. Boom. Tracking down so hard. Now, I could have locked on there. I don't want to. Okay. If you heard the, if you hear the loud cry of the Bloodmaker spawning, that's your cue. So what you're going to want to do when you hear that loud cry, it is okay to divert your attention a little away from Samur. And you can see how much damage I've already done to him. But that Bloodmaker is going to make things so much harder. You will not believe how much easier it is without it on the field. It has about a 20 second spawn. So it's so important to get rid of. So it's okay to let go of Samur. See? Bloodmaker down. You get your ammo refill. The eyes come back too. You'll probably want to get rid of them. At least one of them. They have about, I think, like I said, 10 second spawn time. But Samur's so close to death, he brings his eyes around 40% in. So boom, right there. Perfect. I'm going to take that back. He landed on my platform. Remember, like I said, staying high is best. Let me see. Let me see here. Yeah, staying high is best. But as you see, I kind of went down here where the zombie is to get some of the ammo. I didn't even get my ammo back. He ended up right on my platform, which is horrible. So I pull up the chain gun shield to try to defend, and I go get the soul sphere. I wish I could have saved that for the next phase, but it's fine. Track Samur. When that maker angel, or the blood maker, is not on the field, things are so much nicer. As you can see, there's really not that much threat other, other than the eyeballs. So we'll go here, do a little chainsaw. Need some ammo. Keeping an ear out for the maker. They have a huge battle cry. Now we're in a bit of a situation here. Trying to peck, uh, you know, peck at Samur a little bit. Okay, hold on. We'll go. Okay, I'll get the eyes. PB Ballista quick switch. We're trying to bait out the maker. Okay, there we go. Baited out the maker attack a little bit. Tried to let her do that. Tracking Samur. I'm slipping up a little. This was not my best best run. Now I missed up a, a few shots there, but when he's sitting there, just get the DPS in. Out DPS him. Just go like I was doing. Just go when he's sitting there. If, if, you, if you're clear from the maker or the blood maker. And right here, I knew this was it, and I got him. Oh, this phase. If you'll notice, I paused my game because I was so shaky and nervous at this. This is why you want the two BFG. So, so listen to me. This is important. The last phase in this one are either going to go really good or they're going to fall apart. You, okay. You got to stick to your plan for this next phase. The quicker you end it without going too fast and being reckless, of course, you don't want to do that, obviously. The quicker you end this, the more chance you have of survival. If you let this thing play out, if you keep making mistakes, it just gets harder and harder to claw back out of it. If you'll notice, I ended it quick, quickly right here. So we'll take a look at it. Here. All right. So as you can see, I'm drying my hands off. They're sweaty. <laughs> okay. I go for the pain elemental first now. You could do either. If you want to go for the dread knight first, you can, because you can actually stay up here and lock it, rock, <laughs> lock it, rock on, rock it, lock on and take them down with about three or four of them. But the pain elemental really is the, uh, the MVP of the crew. So I go, I send out a BFG. There's something important that you need to know. Okay. As we got to follow. Thank you. Demon nachos three. The further back you are with a BFG, 
the more damage it does per the codex. So I'm back a little for I probably could have gone back a little farther, honestly, to shoot it across, and I want to hit him directly with it for extra damage. I think there is a... I think they found like a 1.3x multiplier on the Pain Elemental or something like that for the BFG. Now, either way, you're going to want to burn them both up here. Some people do, don't. I personally do. Some people shoot one across the arena for the Dread Knight. They will gain HP back if you take too long to kill them. So if you're not fast, then try this out. Stay back. Launch it across. The tendrils from the BFG will kind of stun that Pain Elemental. Kind of leave them, you know, shaking like that. So get your direct hit in. Direct hit in. There we go. I'm instantly going to go for another one. Now, you got to watch. He can really troll you right here and go behind Sammer, which he didn't do for me, thankfully. So you got to kind of go around and be ready for that so you don't blast Sammer. He actually went off to the left. I take another shot and I missed. So Arbalest will be my next go-to. He takes about four of them from full. So I have the Chrono. If you don't have Chrono on, Arbalest is a lot harder to hit because he is a lot more agile and mobile. So have Chrono on if you want to do the Arbalest. makes it a whole lot easier. Okay, so this point here, I should have Meat Hook Glory killed him. That would have been the quickest and best way because these 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 possessed they unstagger and it is such a pain they have so much health their stagger threshold like typically you want to take a tyrant a tyrant has 10k hp you drop him down to 500 that's a stagger window and then he recovers if you don't unstagger him to like well probably well like 5,000. most most demons are half these guys are very tanky still yet their threshold to be staggered seems pretty dang high when really it's not, it's because of their weapon resistances that you just can't get a lot of damage in. Now, frags and uh, blood punch, like I said, do really, really well. There's an alternate strategy for the Dread Knight we'll talk about here. You can even blood punch the pain elemental with your shield up if you want to. I should have meat hook glory killed. I didn't, but check this out. There we go. So now the spirit's out. What I'm doing here is straight to the microwave beam, watching my surroundings as I'm microwaving. Okay, so we can see bottom left-hand corner, blood makers coming up. I'm really cognizant of what's going on there. Okay. Dodging her shots. Okay, now I'm seeing the pain elementals regular are going to be spawning up to my left. Which is his regular spawn point. So we went ahead and got the spirit. The blood maker's down. You, what you have to realize, there are no eyes in this phase. So if you can get that blood maker down and one of the spirited enemies, that is your time to strike because you get the full ammo from that blood maker. And you've already got one spirit down. So now is your chance. Because normally you want to make sure that you have enough ammo to go in for that second kill for the possessed demon. If you kill the Bloodmaker, you will have enough to do that. You could just run the microwave on the whole enemy. It takes 150 to do a Hell Knight or a Mancubus, but for these, probably more. I've not tested it. But just get the Maker down. And like I said, if you can get that Pain Elemental, it's a whole lot better. All right, so check this out. Here's what I did here. Where's the Dread Knight? Where's it? There he is. If you watch, you watch Samer has that blue beam down the middle of the screen. That's how you can track and follow where the current possessed is. And I'm not very good at that, but it's the way to go with it. Okay, so blast him. Takes like three or four of these. Now, here's where I messed up. I ran out, I screwed up my rockets. I should have done chain gun shield right here. He's very resistant, so I popped it right there as you see. Now, remember, like I said, blood punch and frags are really good. So I thought spur of the moment decision. I didn't plan this. I'm like, all right, my shield's up. He's up close. If I can just do a blood punch, that'll be enough to take him over the edge. And it was. So he staggered. Knock him out. Turn, run, split. All right, pain elemental. Here's, here's what's going through my head right now. Okay, pain elemental right there. Spirit's coming out. Look in the back distance. You got a blood maker. What am I going to do? This is that ice bomb strat. Look, I throw an ice bomb, hit the pain elemental. I need to get him out of my way. His lost souls will track. His lost souls, thanks to lightning brick, tell me, will curve and go all around. I have to get him away now the blood maker is another case I'm, I'm thinking all right i can finish this guy off if i just dodge the blood maker's attacks i freeze the pain elemental that's his that was priority to do and you can see i come over here start hitting the spirit blood makers coming in the background pain elemental's frozen dodging around by the time that blood maker rounds that corner this dread knight's already dead that's why the high ground is so much better because you have that vantage point you can look down you're not caught in this claustrophobic columnic mess at the bottom to where you don't have a good escape and there's really no other way out. I mean, if you have to go down there to get ammo or something, if you can't get it from a blood maker, go down there, do your business, get out of there. Use your chain gun shield very liberally, put it up. As you go through the portal, pop the shield because you don't know where Samer's gonna be at the top if it's phase four. But at this point, I'm down in the bottom. I knew that I could clutch it. I knew that I could clutch it because I was in an advantageous position. They were up ahead of me, right in front. I was back here, I had an escape if I had to and I could make it out. And I had enough time for that Bloodmaker to go around the edge. Something Aqua Gaming actually told me was that 
You have about 10 seconds for, before a spirit possesses another enemy, so you can hit him at about, you know, six, seven second mark. It'll reset his possession. The one thing you do not want, I'm going to go back to face cam for this because you need to listen to this. This is so important. Some people, I've actually talked to Lightning Break. He likes it when the possessed goes back on like a 2x damage run or something into the pain elemental. For me, if it goes back to the pain elemental, I burnt my BFG. I've got my primary strategy out of the way. I know I can like arbalest to him for, for like four times. They take reduced damage to lock on. It's just it's just a mess if that happens. So I try to just take the ammo from the Bloodmaker and just go in for the kill in the match. As you can see, this is it right here. This is it. I mean, I'm not playing around any longer than I need to in this section. And with that, he dies. Boom. Man, I was stoked. Chat was flying around this. I, that's all I can really think of right now. Uh, just this is one take on the fly recording, but I've thought about what I want to say. Let me know in the comments below. Do you agree with this? Do you disagree? Are there better strategies that I don't know? Teach me. I want to learn from you. Be sure to come over, watch me on Twitch, come to the Discord, and check out the save file videos to be able to learn how to do that. Oh, what a fight. My name is Austin. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.